Now in continuation to understand control and high availability in bit more detail let's try to understand what exactly is a cluster a server okay so a cluster server is basically nothing but a combination of individual uh, servers for example in this case you can see we have a, a, a an individual server which is having an ip address of 10.0.0.1 and the host name for this server is node 1 and then we have another server which is having an IP address of 10.0.0.2 and it is having a, a host name of node 2. So now in this case let's say if I want to log into node 1 in that case I need to use either the node 1 host name or this IP address. And if I want to log into node 2 I need to use the IP or the host name of uh, this server. Okay so let's say I, ha I want to form a cluster using these two nodes so what do I need? So in this case First thing which you need is kind of cluster software okay which can be either RHEL or Veritas if you are having Linux machines. Again uh, these are the things or these are the design decision which is going to be taken care by infra admin guys so as a control admin you don't need to be aware of these things but again it is very good to know about this information because it is going to be very helpful when you are trying to install control M when you understand the underlying architecture on which your application is sitting on. So now let's say if you want to form a cluster of you know using these two nodes okay so cluster should be acting as a single machine so in that case both of these nodes is going to be part of a cluster and then it is going to have a single IP address and single host name and that the single IP address and single host name is actually called logical IP or logical host name this is called logical IP because this IP is doesn't really point to any physical server this IP is going to be redirecting you either to node 1 or node 2 based on which server is available or active and again if you uh, point to this hostname this is again going to be pointing you to either node 1 or node 2 based on which is the server which is currently active and again when you are trying to do any kind of uh, software or basically clustering software management in that case you need to use these uh, cluster software or cluster commands and I will leave this to uh, infra admin because this is not something which as a control admin you should be aware of. Okay so having these three things is actually the one which are going to allow you high availability. Now here one more very important factor is now you see these uh, servers are individual so even though you have a logical IP or logical host name they are going to point you to any of these available machines. But that is not going to make your application highly available because let's say you, are, you have installed control M on this node. Okay node 1 and this node goes down. In that case even though uh, this logical IP is going to point you to node 2 but your application which was installed on node 1 is going to be lost because you had installed your application on the mount point or you can say on the local disk of this node. Okay so that's not how a high availability works. So in this case what we are going to need is one very critical thing which is called a shared storage. Okay so in this case we can have a shared storage which is going to be a sand storage. Sand storage is faster. Okay which is going to give us a mount point. In this case let's say that mount point is called slash data. So in this case you need to make sure whenever you are installing a control M application you install that application on this shared storage. Okay, now the functionality of this shared storage is that this shared storage can be accessed by both of these machines. So the, both of these machines can actually access uh, this shared storage and this is made possible by using a clustering uh, software. Okay, so again when you install control M in cluster you actually install control M in cluster using active passive mechanism. So what that means is at one point of time only one node is going to be active and the other node is just going to be passive. So if active node goes down in that case passive node is going to be active. So let's try to understand this in more detail. Now here you see node 1 let's say you have installed your application in a cluster environment okay and in that case node 1 is the one which is actually having access to this storage right now and let's say this storage or let's say this application you know which was running here went down now your actual application is not installed on this machine's local storage your application is installed on shared storage okay so in that case if node 1 goes down clustering software is going to detect that node 1 has gone down 
and then it is going to send signal to node 2 to become active and in that case this you know storage which was actually pointing to node 1 is going to be moving to node 2 okay and in that case we, we and in that case whichever request which is coming on this ip address which is the logical ip address or this logical host name they are the one which are going to be moved to uh, this node okay because this is the node which is active right now and this node is going to have access to this share storage where was your application installed so that's how it is going to be highly available so now you see we no longer have dependency on any of the nodes okay so let's say if node 2 goes down this share storage is just going to be pointing to node 1 if node 1 goes down it is going to be pointing to node 2 so in this case you are going to have a failure only when both of these node goes down in that case you will have a complete failure okay which is very unlikely because in production it is very unlikely that both of your node will go down at the same time so hope this video made very clear about understanding control m uh, clustering node and now you can and now you could have understood what exactly meant when we are saying that control m is going to be installed on highly available environment and how actually a highly availability environment works under the hood